Hello and welcome to News Central TV. I am Adebola Adedba and here are stories making the rounds beyond the continent. The news begins in Europe where Russia opens a treason trial against Dua US Russian citizen for donating around $50 to a pro-Ukrainian charity in the Russian city of Yekaterinburg. Kasiana Karolina, a 32-year-old ballerina living and working in Los Angeles, was detained by police in Yekaterinburg on late January while on a trip to visit her family in Russia. Prosecutors accuse her of proactively transferring funds to a Ukrainian organization which the Ukrainian armed forces subsequently used to purchase tactical medicine, equipment, weapons and ammunition and likely to face life in prison if found guilty. U.S. media reports that she donated around $50 to a New York-based Ukrainian charity in February 2022, shortly after Russia launched its military offensive. The court held the actual proceedings behind closed door as is typical for treason trials and scheduled for another hearing on August the 7th. Russian President Vladimir Putin is seeking to strengthen ties with Vietnam as he begins a state visit to Hanoi a day after signing a mutual defense pact with North Korea Kim Jong-un. Russia and Vietnam pledged to deepen their ties during Putin's state visit aimed at bolstering his alliances to counter Moscow's growing international isolation over the war in Ukraine. President Putin and the Vietnamese Prime Minister Pham Minh signed dozens of cooperation agreements ranging from education to justice and civil nuclear projects and also discussing creating an adequate and reliable security architecture in Asia-Pacific based on the principles of not restoring, resorting rather to force and revolving, resolving differences peacefully. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he does not roll out sending weapons to North Korea a day after signing a mutual defense treaty with Kim Jong-un. South Korea on Thursday called the Russia-North Korea Treaty a grave concern, with a senior official saying Seoul would reconsider its policy of not sending arms directly to Ukraine. Putin brushed off the concerns, saying South Korea has nothing to worry about. South Korea has seen a major growth in international military sales in recent years, but it has a long-standing policy of barring weapon sales into active conflict zone, which is stuck to despite US and Ukraine calling to reconsider. Те, кто поставляет это оружие, считают, что они с нами не воюют. Ну, я вот и сказал, в том числе и в Пхеньяне, что мы тогда оставляем за собой право поставлять оружие в другие регионы мира. Имея в виду наши договоренности с Корейской Народно-Демократической Республикой, я и этого не исключаю. Западники поставляют оружие Украине и говорят, а мы здесь дальше ничего не контролируем, и не важно, как они применяются. Ну, и мы также можем сказать, вот мы поставили кому-нибудь что-нибудь, и дальше мы ничего не контролируем. И, и пускай они думают над этим. In France, far-right national rally, RN, hit back on Thursday at charges from opponents that its spending plans would crash the economy, while President Emmanuel Macron's centuries alliance said it was the only bulwark against financial mismanagement. The nationalist anti-immigrant RN is leading in the polls ahead of a snap parliamentary election on June 30 and July 7, with a newly formed alliance of left-wing and environmentalist party in second place and Macron's camp trailing behind. Macron's shock decision to call the election after his party was defeated by the RN in European elections through French politics into turmoil and caused the euro and French stocks to tumble and France borrowing costs to rise. RN leader Jordan Badella, who could be prime minister if the party wins an absolute majority, sought to ease fears about its high spending plans during an appearance before the MEDEF France leading employers group. Je trouve qu'il y a beaucoup d'ambiguïté, il y a du flottement. Euh, on n'a pas absolument pas compris, on a fait des relances contre les on n'a absolument pas compris quel serait le calendrier et la réalité en définitive de l'annulation de la réforme des retraites qui nous paraît absolument fondatrice pour rééquilibrer les comptes publics, 
mais ça a été dit par ailleurs également pour doper la production. On ne peut pas dire d'un côté ce qu'a dit M. Bardella, il faut que le pays produise plus et s'amputer une partie de notre force de travail. Et tant qu'on inclut, et les chiffres le démontrent, que quand on reporte l'âge légal de départ en retraite, on remet au travail un certain nombre de personnes. Ben, je, je pense que c'est aberrant parce qu'il y a bon nombre d'entreprises qui sont économiquement dans l'incapacité de le faire. Ça supposerait qu'elles puissent répercuter ça aux clients. Et il y a un grand absent dans toutes ces savantes considérations économiques. C'est qu'à la fin des fins, il y a un marché. Et donc si vous avez des entreprises françaises dont les coûts de production augmentent, en l'occurrence à travers l'augmentation du SMIC, euh, elles sont confrontées à des concurrents internationaux. On sait que la compétitivité salariale française n'est pas bonne à ce jour, elle se dégraderait donc. Et puis il y, a, il y a beaucoup de clients, dont je tiens à le préciser, des clients publics, qui refuseraient des augmentations de salaire pour permettre aux entreprises de répercuter dans leur prix de vente. A painter decorator, Cedric Jubila, who was recently charged for murder of his wife and seeking his release, his lawyer said. Jubila, husband of a 33-year-old nurse who went missing in France in December, was charged on Friday with her murder after evading suspicion over her disappearance for half a year. He has been in custody since he was charged on 18th June 2021 with the murder of his wife Delphine in December 2022, following a hearing during which the public prosecutor requested that he be referred to the Court of Appeal. The couple who were in the middle of divorcing have two children aged two and six. Jubila told police that his wife went around 11 p.m. on December 15th to walk the family's two dogs who later returned home without her. She nous dit qu'elle voudrait avoir les fadettes brutes. Voilà. Donc en réalité, on est encore sur une manœuvre. Ça fait quand même trois ans que ça dure de la défense de Cédric Jubilard qui veut reculer l'inéluctable, qui veut euh, que l'instruction s'empêtre dans les mensonges, les provocations, les fausses pistes et les éléments de procédure pour que le temps s'étire et que nous arrivions à la date de 4 ans de détention provisoire et qu'il soit mis en liberté. Ces fadettes, ils les ont demandées, on le leur a donné, mais évidemment, on ne leur a pas donné comme ils veulent. Bientôt, ils voudront qu'on leur donne sur un papier de couleur rose, ou verte ou bleue. Enfin, C'est du n'importe quoi. Si Cédric Jubilard est mis, en état, a mis, est mis en liberté, personne n'est certain qu'il ne va pas essayer de s'échapper et échapper à ses responsabilités. Il nie être euh, coupable du meurtre et il nous raconte n'importe quoi depuis, depuis trois ans. You're watching Beyond the Continent. Let's take a short break. Stay with us. Thank you for staying tuned. In North America, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says U.S. Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Assets Control has announced economic sanctions against eight targets affiliated with the Mexican drug cartel La Noleva Familia. The measures from the U.S. Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Assets Control are aimed at stifling a network known for sending illicit drugs from Mexico across the southern U.S. border to Dallas and Houston, as well as to other cities including Chicago and Atlanta. The sanctions target leaders of the organization, as well as key lieutenants whom Treasury said had meaningfully engaged in and promoted the illicit drug trade. The group is also known for human smuggling, with La Nueva Familia staging videos on which participants falsely claim to be under interrogation in order to win U.S. asylum. Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control has sanctioned eight targets affiliated with La Nueva Familia Micho Acana, a notorious Mexican criminal organization that traffics fentanyl and other legal drugs into the United States, including in Georgia. Second, Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network has issued a new advisory for financial institutions to help them detect financial flows that fuel the illicit fentanyl supply chain. This is critical to enabling law enforcement and sanctions actions against fentanyl traffickers. Today's action advances our efforts by targeting high-level leaders of a cartel that traffics drugs across our southern border to Dallas and Houston, and then farther afield 
to Chicago, Charlotte, and to right here in Atlanta. La Nueva Familia Mitro Acana is also involved in smuggling migrants from Mexico to the United States. The leaders we're targeting have carried out heinous acts from controlling drug routes to arms trafficking to money laundering. Haitian interim Prime Minister Gary Connell says the country's elections are for the people. Gary Connell spoke while visiting the Provincial Electoral Council in Petionville. He asked that the elected leaders will be the people's representatives, urging Haitians to rebuild their country. Haiti looks forward to receiving security support from Kenya in East Africa. <laughs> Mexico president elect Claudia Shimban has promised tougher measures to fight extortion during an event with business leaders in the capital, Mexico City. Powerful cartels control suites of Mexico and are involved not just in drug trafficking, but other crimes including people smuggling, extortion, and fuel theft. She said, that, she said extortion must have a greater sanction. It must be categorized as serious crime and prosecuted even in the absence of an official complaint because it is always difficult for victims to report it. Tengo la convicción de que eh, vamos a disminuir la inseguridad. El presidente ha, eh, le ha, ha cambiado la tendencia, que es muy importante. A veces se suma los delitos, pero cambiar la tendencia es fundamental y a veces es lo más difícil. Y el otro tema es la extorsión, que es una de las propuestas de, que envió ya el presidente, La extorsión tiene que eh, tener mayor sanción, tiene que ser delito grave. Inclusive nosotros queremos ampliarlo a que sea perseguido por oficio. Porque la, eh, la denuncia de extorsión siempre es difícil de quien recibe extorsión. Hay que dar las condiciones de seguridad para la denuncia y que a partir de ahí sea perseguido de oficio. In South America, two persons were killed and nine injured on Thursday as a freight train collided head-on with another train on a test run just outside the capital of Chile, a rare, a rare fatal crash in, in the South American country. The state rail company says the eight-car freight train was carrying 1,346 tons of copper, Chile's main export, and had some people on board while the other train had 10 workers on board operating a speed test. It said both trains were traveling at high speed when they slammed into each other. Police says investigating has started to determine the cause of the collision, which left the test car sitting fully on top of the freight train, and the driver of the test has been de detained, and the railway operator for interrogation on charges of reckless manslaughter. And still in the region, Survivors had to wait 40 years for the perpetrators of the assault to be convicted in a Peruvian court. Ten military officers were sentenced in Lima by the first National Superior Criminal Court to up to 12 years in prison for sexually assaulting nine rural women and girls in 1984. And this happened when the army was fighting the Maoist Shining Path guerrillas and set up a base near the Andean towns of Manta and Vilca one of Peru's poorest regions. 
Condenando al acusado Martín Sierra Gradiel, con DNI número 4527-2333, en calidad de autor directo del delito contra la libertad y violación sexual en agravio de las personas iniciales VGA, ilícito provisto y sancionado en el artículo 170 del Código Penal, modificado por la ley 26 -293, considerado como un delito de lesa humanidad. El... Es muy poco, 20 años de lucha hemos tenido, pero no estoy contento, no estoy conforme con 10 años de sentencia. Ninguno se, se han presentado los que estaban denunciados. Son cobardes. Ella ha sido tan víctima como nosotros. Ha sido humillada. Marilia Araujo ya no está en esta tierra. Ya se fue ya. Ella, ¿de qué sirve? Que va a haber reparación también. Pero no estamos de acuerdo con la reducción de las penas que había pedido la Fiscalía de 18 a 20 años, ¿no? Y han quedado en 10 a 12 años respectivamente y tampoco estamos de acuerdo con la reparación civil que no... In Asia, a batch of toxic illegal alcohol in India has killed at least 34 people with more than 100 others rushed to hospital as hundreds of people die every day in India from cheap alcohol made in back street distilleries. Chief Minister N.K. Stalin said the Press Trust of India News Agency reported that the deadly mix of locally brewed Arak drink was laced with poisonous methanol and arrests have been made over the deaths and warned such crimes ruin society and will be suppressed with an iron fist. To increase its potency, the liquor is often spiked with methanol, which can cause blindness, liver damage and death as selling and consuming liquor is prohibited in several other parts of India. And still in Asia, where India's Financial Intelligence Unit has imposed a fine of $2.25 million on Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange for operating in the country without registering with the agency as required by law. The FIU made its disclosure in a statement obtained by newsmen on Thursday. The Indian authorities said Binance, as a registered entity in the country, violated three sections of the country's Prevention of Money Laundering Act for 2002. Binance had registered with the FIU in May, seeking to resume operations in India after being issued a show cause notice by the financial watchdog in December of 2023. In sports, Serbia have threatened to pull out of Euro 2024 over chanting between fans at the match between Croatia and Albania on Wednesday. Fans could be heard chanting about the killing of Serbians during the 2-2 draw in the Group B march. The General Secretary of the Football Association of Serbia, Jovan Sabotovic, has called for the strongest sanction to be taken. He told the Serbian state-owned broadcaster, RTS, what's happened is scandalous and will ask UF, European governing body, UEFA, for sanction, even if it means not continuing the competition. Serbia in Group C and began the tournament with a one nil defeat by England on Sunday. Sadiko made a nationalist double-handed eagle gesture towards Serbia fans during the game against England. The gesture mimics the eagle on Albania's national flag, which can inflame tensions between Serbian nationalists and ethnic Albanians who make up the vast majority of Kosovo's population. Serbia were fined £12,250 after fans threw objects during the England march. Serbia and Albania were, were also fined as fans from both countries displayed banners of nationalist maps external in their opening matches. Serbia's next match is against Slovenia on Thursday. And history will be made in Colombia with the introduction of an alternative to the video assistant referee called the Football Video Support. This alternative is to be used on a trial basis at the upcoming FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. According to FIFA, the trial follows numerous requests from member association for a cost-effective way to use technology to support match officials. In response to those requests, FIFA has developed the FVS, which, unlike the video assistant referee system, does not use dedicated video match officials and therefore does not check all match changing incidents.
The abolished Afro-Asian Cup competition is set to return in 2025, according to the organizers. The competition, which was established in 1986, is contested between the winners of the African Champions League and the Asian Champions League. It was cancelled in 2000 due to some logistical reasons. According to the update from Qatar, the one-game final will be staged in 2025 in Qatar and it will be between al Hali of Egypt and al Ain of Qatar. And that's all on Beyond the Continent. Send your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number on the screen and do follow us on social media. We are at News Central TV. You can watch us live on DSTV, Channel 422, Star Times, Channel 274, Avo TV, and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I am Adebola Adedugba. It's bye for now.